I'm going to talk today about 7 millimeters. One of the biggest reasons for this video is the 7 millimeter PRC. I'm going to explain something. I'm going to explain something in a way that I think that everybody should be able to understand. One of the reasons that I'm talking about this today is is because of misunderstanding. The knowledge base is not there from either aspect, from somebody that knew nothing about it to now that somebody that's writing about it. Either side really knows what they're really talking about here. I'm going to get right down to it and explain these things. One of the biggest things here is the 7 millimeter PRC is claimed to have been, been designed to be able to feed through a standard length action. So what? It was designed to design designed to function through a standard length action. So according to their ideas, people involved with this situation, they decided to take the 300 PRC case and shorten it. They shortened it roughly a quarter of an inch, pushed the shoulder back by about the same amount, came up with a case that's four grains less case capacity than a 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. This basically allows the bullet, in most instances, of boat tail design, low drag boat tail design, to be seated the depth of the neck with the boat tail projecting below the neck into the capacity of the case. This basically allows an ideal situation, which I won't disagree with. However, there's a much greater picture here. The other aspect is specifically to burn certain burn rates of powder, ideal for that capacity case. Yeah, there's, there's that situation. But here's where the plot really thickens. Claims that this is the only cartridge ever designed this way, and it's the ideal cartridge in 7mm and so on and so forth, just because they did it this way. That doesn't make it the ideal cartridge. It states the velocities and whatnot that this cartridge supposedly generates with various different bullet weights, and as you'll discover, there's Double talk, misinformation, statements that just simply aren't true, situations that just simply can't be, and I'm going to dive right into that. Stated that 175 grain quantity EDL X bullet, seated the way that I described, out of a 26 inch barrel, allows that bullet to run 2,981 feet a second. This was stated in a magazine, you know, Guns and Ammo magazine, an article written by Tom Beckstrand. Well, it gets better than this, folks. And then it states that, it states that this cartridge, that this cartridge actually produces more velocity than cartridges that have a bigger case capacity. Now, one of the first things that he states is that the 28 nozzler with basically the same the same bullet loaded up to full potential does 31 and a quarter. Then he turns right around and tells how the 7 millimeter PRC does 100 to 125 percent proceed a second more velocity when he's already stated that the 7 millimeter PRC does 2981 with a 175. Now there's no way possible, I don't care what you load in it, 
I don't care what you do, that you can load a 7 millimeter PRC to 32, 3250 feet a second, according to that information. It is not possible. These things are done this way purposely to knock other cartridges. In that process, of course, they're talking about the 28 nozzler to make it sound like it's better than the 28 nozzler. The 28 nozzler is a better cartridge. It runs in also a standard length action by the way, and the bullet is seated down in the case capacity, but the point is it gives you higher velocity. Higher velocity at the muzzle means more energy downrange. You get it? And this just keeps going on and on and on. And stating that it was designed this way and that way and other way and the throats are the throats are cut to smaller diameter and all that. Well I can tell you right here and now, there's not anybody writing about any of this that has the, the gauges, the tools, to measure the throat in any rifle barrel. I happen to have those gauges to measure any rifle barrel up to 50 caliber. Anything that's on the market from a 17 to a 50 caliber I can measure. I've got the gauges to do so. I have the ability. Now just because the the reamer that's made by the manufacturer says that the that the diameter of the throat is such and such in this can, situation 284 6, 6 tenths over bullet diameter, well, we've got people talking about things here that they really have no experience at, they've never chambered a rifle barrel in their life, they don't have the ability to gauge chambers or chamber throats or anything else because they don't know. They can write an article, but they can't seem to tell it like it is, like it really is and what are true facts. And this is a true fact. The situation is just because the reamer says it's that size, the pilot has to have a little bit of room in the bore when you put the pilot, the reamer, in the barrel. You've got a little bit of free movement so it's automatically, irregardless, going to cut a little larger diameter than that. So hanging your hat on this aspect, it's just simply a bunch of nonsense that you don't understand because you don't have the experience, you're not a machinist, a tool and die maker, a gun maker like myself, which I understand it all and I've gauged all these things for almost my entire lifetime. I know what I'm talking about. Now, we'll get away from that dimensional aspect. We're going to go right back to this velocity and case capacity aspect. As I just said, it's not possible to get that kind of velocity. It's not going to happen. They've already told us what the velocity is, and then he tells us again that it's something else. That it's, you know, 260 some odd feet a second faster than what he just stated. It's either one or the other. And it's the lower velocity that's the truth. The higher velocity is nothing but nonsense. Now, one of the reasons that I'm talking about this is 7mm. I have more experience with 7mm, different 7mm chamberings than anybody that's in the gun making business now or anybody that I've ever known. I have chambered for virtually everything that there is, and I continue to chamber for almost everything that there is, and I've tested all these things per personally. And I have for years. I've built hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 7 millimeter rifles in all sorts of chamberings. And I shoot a half a dozen different chamberings myself. Mostly larger cal caliber chamberings. Not all, but big, big cases. Cases of, you know, 28 nozzle capacity up to 300 Weatherby case capacity. Now, this cartridge is not just automatically because somebody says so that it's ideal and one of the main reasons why it's not ideal is because where it's coming from. It's coming from Hornady. 
We're constantly, constantly hanging the hat on the EDLX design bullet. These bullets I have found in actually shooting game go to hell. They turn into nothing but a bunch of shrapnel, create a terrible damn wound channel, and ruin a, a whole damn quarter of an elk, for instance. How do I know this? Because I just said, I've tried it. I've done it. I did it when the 30 caliber bullets first came out, 200 grain 30 calibers, out of a, out of a 300 ultra mag. The bullet simply was a huge, huge disappointment. Now we've got some very excellent bullets. We've got some very excellent bullets, especially in our homogeneous line of bullets, all copper, all gilding metal, jacketed type bullets, bonded core bullets. It's also trying to hang their hat on this on this interlock interlock design of the of the of the CDLX bullet. I've sectioned these bullets. They have the tiniest little indication of an interlock, much tinier than say a 175 grain Hornady interlock soft point. That's got a real interlock on it, and those bullets work just fine. But these other bullets just simply do not work. We're hanging our hat on this. We're hanging our hat on this high ballistics coefficient. Now, I want to explain something to you here. Just because it has a high ballistics coefficient doesn't mean that it's the best choice. There are much, much better choices. One of the very, very best choices ever since they came out was Nosler's 175 grain partition in both their semi-spitzer and their spitzer. And I've used these extensively and I killed, I've killed several hundred game at a game with these bullets. I know how, what they do, I know how they work, and they always, always work. I have had, in that many head of game, I've only had to shoot two head of game twice. Now that should tell you something. That should tell you that the bullet works. But yeah, I know it doesn't have the ballistics coefficient. So damn what? The whole thing is, you can have ballistics coefficient, but you need a bullet of the proper design that will hold together for game. If you're going to promote it as a game cartridge, it's got to shoot a game bullet. Not a poorly designed bullet that's not going to do the job and is going to fail you. I have proven this time and time again, and I've shot more of these more of these different bullets than anybody else out here on game. I know what works. Now, if you don't believe me to do a ballistics coefficient, maybe you'll believe this, or maybe you won't. On Hornady's page. There is no such thing as an absolute and invariable ballistics coefficient. Ballistics coefficients are only one factor in bullet selection for different kinds of shooting. A ballistic coefficient can change with reference to altitude, temperature, atmospheric pressure, and relative humidity and other aspects. Ballistics coefficients are measures of a bullet's relative, relative efficiency. Ballistics coefficients are not measurement of a bullet's goodness. Ballistics coefficients do not necessarily make a bullet better. Ballistic, lower ballistics coefficients do not necessarily make a bullet worse. You get it? You see where I'm coming from? This is exactly where I'm coming from. Now, I've been basically told that I've chose to pick on these cartridges. I'm not picking on the cartridge at all. I'm picking on the BS, the BS, the untruths that are being handed out here, and it's coming from inexperience, completely across the board. I don't think that any of these people that are making these statements have the experience that I do with the seven millimeters or any caliber for that matter, because I've got an extensive amount of experience as a gun maker and hunting for 58 years in the hunting field, I know what works and I know what doesn't work. Now, this statement 
and it's the only cartridge that was designed this way, well, that's just simply not so. There's been perimeters, there's been aspects to the design of every cartridge that's ever come down the pike. And there's not another man living anywhere that knows the entire story to do with the 7mm Remington Magnum. Les Bowman and I were very close friends for 30 some odd years. We worked together. We tested guns together. We shot together. We recreated together and we hunted together in various aspects. Now, I have done a video in the past on the development of the 7mm Remington Magnum. I'm going to enlighten you on some of the aspects of this that I haven't really touched on, but I'm going to touch on them right now. Now, the first place, the 7mm Remington Magnum, DuPont, when DuPont, DuPont owned Remington, and Remington decided to come out with Les Bowman's idea, and they call it the 7mm Remington Magnum. Anyway, DuPont specifically designed their own powder, IMR7828 for the 7mm Remington Magnum, and I have some of that original bulk lot of powder that I got from Les Bowman many, many years ago. A lot of years ago. So, don't give me this BS that, you know, designed around a certain burn rate of powder. There was a per certain burn rate of powder manufactured specifically for the cartridge, and that's exactly what was done. And the 7mm Remington Magnum has been loaded with every basic bullet design that there is, no matter what it is, and been loaded by virtually every ammunition company that there is, and it has done so for years and years and years, and it's worked. In some instances, the bullets are not the right selection, just like some of these bullets that I'm talking about have never been the right selection. There are bullets that are wonderful selection. It is no better than a 7mm Remington Magnum, the PRC. It's no better whatsoever. I've just pointed out all the aspects why. Now here's the thing. You see, the 7mm Remington Magnum was field tested for several years, by the way by Les Bowman in various rifles that he had built and barreled by various people. I saw all these rifles. I know what they were. And his hunters that came to hunt with him in the high country of Wyoming were given one of these rifles to carry for the purpose of taking game testing the cartridge. Now, this cartridge was field tested by Les before it was ever brought on the market with what we had at the time and it was tested specifically with 160 grain bullets by Les. Remington came out with 150 grain Corlock. Corlock is still a pretty good bullet. Anyway, The biggest downfall to the 7 Remington Magnum was it was a standard length cartridge in a long magnum length action. Now the most sensible thing to do is to throw that out to seat the bullet out just as they've done with this PRC cartridge. But for heaven's sakes, you shouldn't do that. We did it with our cartridge, but that's not right for you to do it with these other cartridges. This just doesn't make sense. Well, there's nothing that makes more sense than this. You did it. Why in the hell can't we do it? I've been doing it ever since my first 7 Remington Magnum because I discovered right off the bat that the bullet needed to be seated out a little bit. And ammunition basically was tested and there was pressure test information and recommended loads, load information put out by Bruce Hodgson and most of that information 
was considerably considerably warm, especially on the top end of loads, maybe too hot for damn near any rifle. Well, I've shot and I've built seven Remington Magnums. And the fact of the matter is, I've always been able to get with with 7828 and a properly throated rifle. You did it with the PRC, folks. I did it with this. A lot of other people have too. And I've done it with hundreds of other cartridges. And I'm going to continue to do it because it's the thing to do. I'm able to get, I have two 7 Remington Magnums. I'm able to get 31 and a quarter. The 3145 out of a 160 nozzle partition in, on a 24 inch barreled rifle. My 26 inch barreled rifle, I get 3200 with 7828. I get 3000, 3050 feet a second with a 26 inch barreled gun in 7828. Now, you see, the velocity is there. But where we've really lost, we've not gained, with these high BC bullets. In a lot of instances, we've lost, and we've lost badly. The higher the ballistics coefficient is an automatic indication to Randy that you better check the, the construction of the bullet, and you better try it on game, because it likely is not going to do it. There'll never be... Another 7mm bullet brought out by anybody, in my estimation, that will kill game better than 175 grain nozzle partition, period. Now, this isn't just limited to 7mm. This also applies to a lot of these other calibers. But I've chose this to talk about because of the misinformation. I pointed out the misinformation. I don't know how anybody can say something on one side here and state velocities and then completely debunk that with other velocities. So right then and there, there's a problem. And I'm pointing it out. I haven't chose to pick on the PRC cartridges. I'm just telling you the honest facts, the honest truth of what's going on here. Now. I need to look here at my notes here for just a second. What we have here is we've got people that are handed one of these writers, various writers that are handed this these things and doing these things. But they really don't have all the information. I've got the information. I know what works. The other aspect is one of the biggest downfalls to all this is, I don't read from anybody about using a one inch tenth micrometer measure case head expansion to do with anything. Whether it's of measuring a factory load and see what the pressure was, what the expansion was on the case head, or by the writer writing the information. This right there, indicates to me that this man is not a hand loader. This man is a reloader. He's just simply a reloader, which is assemb an assembler of various loads of ammunition. A hands-on man that knows the full damn picture, chronographs everything, and has the 1 inch 10 mic 10th micrometer right there, just like Bruce Heisen did in his ballistics hat lab, in addition to the pressure test equipment that he was using at the time. He always went to, on top of everything else, the one inch test micrometer, and I've brought this out in the past. And I actually have information, I actually have information to this effect with Les Bowman there visiting with Bruce Hodgson for many years ago and talking about the one inch test micrometer measure of, of cases. And Les basically taught me this, and I'm a master at reading a micrometer. I'm a master at reading the pressure, and it will never fail anybody if they'll use the methods. I've explained the methods in one of my videos before. So, 
When we start talking about these things, we need to understand what you're really talking about. And know, know the talk. If you're going to talk the talk, then walk the walk. If you can't walk the walk when you talk the talk, then you shouldn't talk the talk. Because it just doesn't fly. It doesn't fly with somebody that really knows the score, and I know the score. I know what it's all about. I know what works. And I know what the energies are with these bullets. That's the other aspect. Energy has been just firstly abandoned. Ballistics coefficient has taken over. Ballistics coefficient, I've already told you about ballistics coefficient. You need an education, a real education on energies. They've ignored energies. In fact is, they've taken energies that we figured out years ago that we need with this 7 millimeter was about 1,800 foot-pounds and dropped it clear down to about 1,200 foot-pounds. So, figure it out, folks. It's all right there. It's in black and white, and I've explained it in just as plain as I can explain it. Have a good day.